This is Clarice Lim, founder of I Love Learning Achievement Center. In this video, we'll be talking about the differences between IQ and the theory of multiple intelligences and the impact it has on how we groom children. IQ, or the intelligence quotient, are used as an indicator of logical reasoning ability and the technical intelligence. Children with high IQ usually perform better in maths and science in school. Most people see IQ as a general indicator of intelligences, also frequently used as predictors of educational achievement, job performance, and income. However, is IQ really a good predictor of your personal achievement? Let's look at these examples. President Washington of the United States in the 1990s has an IQ of only 98, which is really considered very normal. Andy Warhol an American artist who was a leading figure in the visual art movement known as pop art. He enjoys a successful career as a commercial illustrator and has an entire museum built just to honour his work. His IQ is only 86, which is really below average. How about those with really high IQ? Many scientists are known for their high IQ, like Einstein is said to have an IQ of 160. But there are also exceptions in life. For example, Asia Serila. She is really a porn star, has a score of just four points below that of Einstein. To offset the imperfections of IQ, many other quotients were developed, like the EQ, BQ, and MQ. Emotional intelligence is about being aware of your own feelings and those of others regulating these feelings in yourself and others, using emotions that are appropriate to the situation, self-motivation, and building relationships. Moral intelligence deals with your integrity, responsibility, sympathy, and forgiveness. The way you treat yourself is the way other people will treat you. Keeping commitments, maintaining your integrity, and being honest are crucial to moral intelligence. Body intelligence reflects what you know about your body, how you feel about it, and take care of it. Your body is constantly telling you things. Are you listening to the signals or ignoring them? Are you eating energy-giving or energy-draining foods on a daily basis? Are you getting enough rest? Do you exercise and take care of your body? It may seem like these matters are unrelated to business performance, but your body intelligence absolutely affects your work because it largely determines your feelings, thoughts, self-confidence, state of mind, and energy level. And the list is still being explored. How Albert Gardner came up with is much more comprehensive. He proposed that there are altogether eight intelligences. People with high verbal linguistic intelligence display a high ability with words and languages. They are typically good at reading, writing, telling stories, and memorizing words along with dates. Students who typically do well in English in school supposedly has a high ability in this category. This area has to do with logic, abstractions, reasoning, numbers, and critical thinking. This also has to do with having the capacity to understand the underlying principles of some kind of causal system. This will be the best match to the measurements of IQ. Students who typically do well in maths and science in school supposedly has a high ability in this category. This area has to do with nurturing and relating information to one's natural surroundings. Examples include classifying natural forms such as animal and plant species and rocks and mountain types. This ability was clearly of value in our evolutionary past as hunters, gatherers and farmers. It continues to be central in such roles as botanist or chef. This next area deals with a spatial judgment and the ability to visualize with the mind's eye. Children high on this ability enjoys organization, charts, graph, illustrations, and maps. The core elements of the bodily kinesthetic intelligence are control of one's bodily emotions and the capacity to handle objects skillfully. Also includes a sense of timing, a clear sense of the goal of a physical action, along with the ability to train responses. People who have bodily kinesthetic intelligence should learn better by involving muscular movement, getting up and moving around into the learning experience, 
and be generally good at physical activities such as sport, dance, acting, and making things. Gardner believes that careers that suit those with this intelligence include athletes, dancers, musicians, actors, builders, police officers, and soldiers. This would be the best match to the measurements of EQ. This area has to do with sensitivity to sounds, rhythms, tones, and music. People with a high musical intelligence normally have good pitch and may even have absolute pitch and are able to sing, play musical instruments, and compose music. Since there is a strong auditory component to this intelligence, those who are strongest in it may learn best via lecture. They will sometimes use songs or rhythms to learn. The interpersonal and intrapersonal area has to do with interaction with others. In theory, individuals who have high interpersonal intelligence are characterized by their sensitivity to others' moods, feelings, temperaments, and motivations, and their ability to cooperate in order to work as part of a group. Those with this intelligence communicate effectively and empathize easily with others, and may be either followers or leaders. They typically learn best by working with others and often enjoy discussions and debates. Careers that suit those with this intelligence include salespersons, politicians, managers, teachers, counsellors, and social workers. The intrapersonal area has to do with introspective and self-reflective capacities. This refers to having a deep understanding of the self, what your strength weaknesses are, what makes you unique, being able to predict your own reactions, emotions. So the interpersonal and the intrapersonal ability when combined together can also be seen as a measure of EQ. In conclusion, the eight multiple intelligences tells us there's more than meets the eye when we are trying to predict the potential of a child in contributing to society that is not measurable by IQ alone, which is the achievement in maths or science the logical mathematical intelligence, nor is your child's achievement measured by his English performance, because that will be looking at the verbal linguistic aspect only. And that brings to the point that if your child is gifted in one area, help your child further explore that area. Give him all the resources you can gather to ensure that the gift is not wasted. Don't worry about training your child in all area and get really upset if your child is not multiply intelligent. Remember that a jack of all trades is a master of none. With this, thank you for watching. I hope you now understand that every child is different and not performing in school is only a poor performance in at most two of the multiple intelligences. Don't brood over it. Help explore your child's other gifts. I've shared some links in our Facebook page for your child to find out where his or her interests might lie in the multiple intelligences. Do check it out. At I Love Learning, we help your child better tackle areas that schools want them to perform in, so your child will have more time to explore other gifts. At I Love Learning, we discover your love for learning. Take care.